What's going on everybody, Jay Hayes here, so today I'm doing a review on a device that I picked up for the purposes of the review. Now the only reason, and I repeat, the only reason why I bought this is just because a lot of people are like, oh, that's a copy of the G-Class. Now I knew when I first saw it that it does have the same type of button configuration, it does have a little joystick, but this company has got to be either a reproduced company, meaning that it's someone that already made products, they stopped making them and then they went back to it because there's nothing about this company. I've even went as far as looking up the company that makes this brand, I have no idea. However, this does have a Yeehe chip inside of it. Now it's not the typical Yeehe that we're used to seeing the 500 or the 550, this is the 530 which I guess for lack of better terms is their cheaper rendition for people that want to put it in cheaper mods. Three different variations this comes in and again, there's not a whole lot on this box. It's a dual battery box mod. Not terrible looking, doesn't feel terrible. It has a center 510 pin. It is possible that the company that's making this is a brand new company in China. We know that these pop up all the time. But given the situation of all the negativity and all the negative shit that's going on in China in regards to the companies not paying reviewers, whatever the case may be, like, okay, copyright or patent or trademark, you know, there must be something going on to where these new companies are popping up. For parts of this review, I am. I'm going to be using a comparison of the SXG Clash just because there are people that think that these are very similar. Now I understand that there's mods or there's drippers or there's tanks that come out that look like a previous product that came out before, but we can't use something as blanketed as button placement because there's really not a whole lot of other places for you to put the buttons for the mod essentially in the front or on the side. That's literally all you have for locations. So this isn't a full kit. It's literally just a box mod. And sometimes I'll buy just box mods if I'm not interested in doing a whole review for a starter kit. Plus I have like 5,000 other starter kit reviews that I've already done reviews on. So without further ado. Let's flip it. The sticking fair price luxury product, a bit of a far stretch. And then on the side of the box, it's gonna say the color configuration. This is the J graffiti version, which is supposed to be Asian inspired graffiti. On the other side, a little bit of information about the company. That's where you're gonna find all of it out. You know, listen, you look this up. It's very, very hard to find out who in fact made this. And I think that's kind of imperative to the design because if we know that Yeehee made this device, then all right, it's gonna to be pretty solid versus if literally this guy right here Dong Guan V sticking is the first time that they made a mod what is that going to tell you about the warranty and all the quality assurance issues one might have with this on the corner of the box we have a bit of a ding now that probably happened with shipping I don't think that left their facility like that. Two little pieces of plastic that go on the bottom of the mod to stop it from scratching and wearing off quicker than what it should. A V sticking warranty card a user manual, micro USB, which you're going to be able to use to charge this or upgrade the firmware, and then the box mod. Now, I can tell you just by looking at this, the first thing I noticed is how shitty the quality of what that battery section is and that front face plate. This is going to make me believe that Yeehe did in fact design this, and the reason being is because of the metal that they're using. I've never seen it on any other device with the exception of a Yeehe device. Let me pull out the actual mod that I'm talking about that uses the same type of metal and configuration that I got going on. You can tell just by looking at this that that and this are very similar. You can tell just by looking at the metals that they are very, very similar and that type of finish it is. I don't want to say that's the machining because it's really not. It's just the way that the metal is polished. They could have polished this up to remove a lot of the pitting and sand it out and put a type of clear coat over it, but they didn't. They elected it to keep it the way that it is, even though this is considered high end in their realm. I did do a review on this, and if you haven't seen that, I'll put that in the corner right there. This is the Captain America rendition. Now, if you got this in matte black, it's not going to look anywhere near as horrible as this one does. Not only does the metal make me think that this is made by Yeehe, and this is their secondary company, you have the same type of configuration. You have a joystick here, you have a fire button, your screen's located here. It's utilizing a Yeehe chip, and usually when a cheaper company comes out with something, they're not going to use a high-end chip like a Yeehe or a DNA. So they go with kind of a proprietary proprietary chip, which isn't necessarily a problem, but this is utilizing a Yeehe chip, and it's a brand new company that I've never heard of before. So you do the math. It's very possible that Yeehe had an overabundance amount of 530 chips, and they just wanted to utilize them and put them in a bunch of box mods and sell them. This is the mod that everybody's saying that it resembles, right here. 
the height of the mod is identical. Maybe off by half a millimeter. Fire button's kind of the same location. USBs are a little bit different. To be honest with you, I see the similarities in regards to the button placement, but other than that, the height is identical. But the way it feels, the way it looks, the placement of the micro USB and the joystick on this one versus on this one, it's a little bit lower. So there are different chips though. This is a SX500, this is a 530. This chip is actually better than this chip. It's weird because the higher the numbers go, the usually the shittier the quality is until you start rounding it up into the hundreds. Well, I guess that's not really true because the 350J is better than the regular 350. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. This may be a sticker on the side of this mod. It actually doesn't feel bad at all. It feels a whole lot better than what that metal looks like. It's kind of grippy in a sense where you know it's in your hand and you're not going to drop it. You do have a center section for a 510, which is going to allow you to sport a 30 millimeter with absolutely no problem whatsoever. You may even get away with a 34 or 35. I don't really have a lot of things that are over 30 millimeters to test to see if they work. Rest assured that 30s, 28s, no problems whatsoever. 22s may look a little bit funny on here. Fire button, clicky, joystick, clicky and does move around a bit. Man, that battery door looks like shit. There's, whoa, man. Do not stick your finger underneath here to grab this because it's going to kind of pull and tug on it. You may have to stick your finger in there. Oh my God, that is rough. Let me tell you what happened. So not like it hurts. Let me just explain what happened. So when you stick your finger in here to pull this back to actually lift it up, the spring mechanism that they have in here is very, very springy. So what happens is, is when your finger is in here, when it gets to about right here, you're trying to pull your nail away, but this is still going back, catching onto your nail. Intense. All right, almost looks like the contacts are silver plated there. That's what I would assume they are. Maybe they're veering away from gold plated. Positive side there, negative side here. When you have the batteries in, you don't have to worry about this little notch right here. Just go ahead and give that a push and it's gonna snap in. SX 530. Really not a bad display at all. Wow, that color is friggin' crazy. I know that's a copyrighted image. The colors on the screen are absolutely phenomenal. I do not believe this to be OLED, but that it just looks really, really well done. Same types of configuration going to the left is going to cycle through the different memory functions. So right now we're in novice mode. Now the way you change the modes is going to dictate what you can do with the menu or you can do with the mod. In novice mode, all you do is you just press this once and then you adjust your wattage. There's nothing else. There's no temp control. There is a way to get to the actual clock by pressing the fire button three times. And if you press it two more times after that, it's going to bring it into the menu. One, two, three. There's the clock. One, two and then back into the whole menu. We've been through all of this on all of their devices. If you don't like novice mode, you wanna to go to the advanced, you're just gonna hold this to the left and then you're gonna see it switch out to standard. There's no way to change this right here, this nickel 200 to say anything else besides that. Even if you put it in bypass mode by pressing this down, that still stays there. See, bypass nickel 200. If you go to the right, that's gonna change the way this hits, whether that be standard, Powerful, powerful plus, soft, and then back to standard. There was an SX IQ in there. And that's really it. But for most people, using this in novice feature is going to be more than adequate enough for this type of mod. So once again, that is the V sticking VK530. Let's bring it on the top. <coughs> All right, so here we are back on top with the V-Sticking VK350. I'm just going to assume this is manufactured by Yehi. Surprisingly enough, very rarely will you find any kind of mech mod, especially a squonk, that will be able to support a 30 millimeter. Not saying that this is a squonk, it's just really nice that it does work and it is dead smack center. 0 0.20 dual coil at 92.5 watts. Here we go. a little bit more power for it. I don't feel like that's accurate. 7.45 volts. <laughs> Shit! <laughs> yeah. That's, oh my. You ever cough so hard it like gives you an immediate sweat? You know what I'm talking about? Like when that feeling overwhelms your body? 
Oh, shit. I don't think you'd be able to put out that kind of power. I'm going to be straight up with you. I've never really had any problems with Yee or any of the chips. I know it seems like I'm a little bit far away and I'll get closer once the blood on my lips. It's not really there. Let me just try that again. You know, I have nothing really against Yee They have made solid products before. The Q Mini was absolutely amazing. Probably one of the best boxes to ever come out of China. But then they go downhill and they make something like that little sail jammy that Thing Fate made. I get it that he was first with the curved bottom. They did that stupid fidget spinner shit. Like, yeah, I have no idea what this company is doing. Like, you're making high-end type products, then you make cheap, and then you make this. If it's not Yee Hee making this, then I apologize. But I'd be willing to bet almost anything that this is from that company. Just the way that that mold is for the battery door, the way that it kind of feels, the way that it looks, the metal. The metal is marquee. It's, well, marquee's a good thing. It, the metal on this looks like it came out of an old recycled pot. It looks disgusting. And I'm not going to judge it by that. You know what? I'm not going to judge it by... Yes, I am. I'd be lying if I told you I wouldn't. So as far as function... My fucking eyes are killing me. Oh my god, dude. Okay, so as far as functionality is concerned, this works well. It's a yee -hee chip. But in advanced mode, there's a lot of settings under each individual menu. And then going through all those, I guess once you got it, you got it. And you don't really need to set it. You forget it. The chip that is on the inside of this isn't bad. It's just really the outside of this mod which makes it bad. Whether that's the metal, the way it feels. Although the grippy stuff does feel good, it almost feels cheap. Especially when you feel the metal that looks like it's all pitted. If any of you guys out there have ever painted cars or you've done any kind of auto body work, you're going to know what fisheye is or orange peel. Not fisheye. Fi I think it's fisheyes. It's... Maybe it's fish scales. Regardless, you know what I'm talking about. Basically what that does is when you look at a paint job, and this is usually not from the factory, you'll see little waves and rivets. That's exactly what this reminds me of. I wanna say it's called fish eyes. Yep, fish eyes paint defect. Yep, that's it. So when paint is applied on top of this contaminant, the paint is unable to adhere to the oily surface and a fish eye crater is caused. I nailed it, see? And it gives it yeah, I know. It's it's going to be very difficult for me to pull that up. Let's see if I can pull up the image. No. Basically, that's the type of appearance this has. And to me, that's just tacky. Because I know that people think, okay, I'm going to judge it. I'm going to take points off because it's ugly. Of course I am. Of course. When you look at a woman, right? No pun intended for all you ladies out there. Unless, of course, you're sucking clit. Okay? Let me, let me tell you something. When you look at a woman or a dude, do you say, yeah, I'd hit that. Where do you think the saying, yo, that's a dime piece came from? Where, where do you think that came from? Because she's a 10, a dime. You never heard anybody be like, yeah, she's a nickel. No, no, you haven't. I don't know if anybody says dime piece anymore, but you get the point. So you rate somebody, like if you walk, okay, let me put it to you in a different perspective. You walk up to somebody and you're talking to them and a, their fucking teeth fall out of their mouth. You're going to take a point or two off. It's the same shit. I look at this paint job like it's dentures. I don't know how, <laughs> I don't know how else to tell you that. If you don't fucking like it, then you know what? Honestly, all jokes aside, I don't know anybody that would look at this and be like, yeah, that's beautiful. I, I, I swear to God, it's not one of those things where it's subjective. If you think that this is beautiful, you probably should go out and maybe read the internet a little bit. The mod works. As of recently, I've been including a little bit of the price point, not saying whether or not it's worth it or, you know, if it's too much money or too expensive or too little bit of money. I don't think that's ever the case with anything vape related. Like, oh man, that's really worth $90, but I got it for three. That's not usually a thing. With the price point that this is at is ludicrous. $80 for this box mod. Yeah, no, sorry. Mm -mm. You're better off spending another 40 bucks and getting a real SX Mini G Class. Now, I get it. That's kind of still cross referencing the same company that made this. And again, I'm saying that, I'm assuming that. As much as shit that I've reviewed, I figure that I can look at a device or feel it or use it and say, okay, that's from said such company. It is possible that it's not, but please, please, V Sticking, comment. 
Give me some information about your company. I would love to know. So if you don't do that, I'm just going to assume that this is Yihi trying to sell their other chips in a fashion where they're making money off of the chip and making a little bit off the box mod. Straight up, I think this thing is probably worth about $30 to $40. I get it that the chip inside is 60 to 70 bucks. Respectively speaking, you might be able to get it for 40 but it's not an SX500 chip. If it was that, it would be a little bit better. This is almost like the downgraded or the budget version. Basically, if you're on welfare and you can't afford the G-Class, you may pick this up. But I still wouldn't, because at 80 fucking dollars, I could show you a thousand other products. Literally, a thousand other products that are better than this for the price point that this is at. So across the board, if I was to rate this device on a zero to 10, I'm gonna give it a two, a 2.5. I won't go three, I won't go four, I won't go anything higher than 2.5. It does work without a doubt. Advanced mode is extremely advanced. At $80, someone may pick this up and be like, this shit is confusing as hell. Compensate temperature, adjust color, adjust brightness. It's entirely too much and it feels like shit. I would feel much comfortable with the 2 or the 2.5 just based off the price point alone, the, the, the quality of the metal, how advanced the menu is, as much as that seems like a great feature that's going to confuse an ass load of people. It's nice to have extra features, but as in-depth as this is, it's just like the G-Class. And I don't feel like a lot of people would utilize all the different settings that's inside this type of mod. I would not recommend this to anybody for the price point that it's at. I literally feel that this is truly a ripoff at $80. Now, if you find this for 30, 40, 50 bucks, probably. Just 80? Absolutely not. And I've kept it real. Have you? Jason.